Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of River Dragons Weekly. I'm VP of Communications and play-by-play -play broadcaster Zach DeBozart. Well, we were in Port Huron last weekend. Week three of the FPHL season has finished up after the River Dragons split the points in Delaware and at home against Elmira. How would the team fare taking on their first opponent in the newly revamped Western Division in the FPHL? Let's take a look. Here's the highlights from Friday night. Bottom of the circles, he comes out with it on his backhand to Vermeulen. Vermeulen center point, back for Fallis. Winds up, save made, Pollen. Rebound, attempted to be cleared away there by Parsons. River Dragons holding in behind the net, rimmed around near side, Howie finds it. To Pease down in the corner, going back for Howie, trying to lay it off for Fallis. Look out, Dalton Jay's on a breakaway. Stole the pass, Jay in all alone, fires high over the bar of Pashevitz and wide. That should kill off the uh, penalty kill. Four the seconds play. left, Peshtuka stands up in the box. Arnott, near side circle, he's a free man. One for one on the Houston Clinic penalty kill tonight are the River Dragons. Look out, Young the other way, save made, Pashevitz, and he sticks away the rebound out of his crease. Croup to the middle, and that one went through Shoot. Graham's feet. Here's Peshtuka, right circle, looks. Oh, he rippled the outside of the net there. Croup trying to put this one to the center. Here's Graham, oh, Bonarenko in front, it's off his skate, rebounds loose, Bono still with it, and he couldn't pass to Croup in the left wing circle, it was behind him. Arnott collects there, Giuliano sending it ahead, Dalton Jay got a step around a man, Giuliano have breakaway, oh and I think a pad saved by Pashevitz. Pashevitz side of his own net, plays this into the near side corner, Vermeulen chasing after here with Graham, Graham wins it, Port Huron from behind the net with Levier. now to Robertson to the middle, tic tac passing, Whoa. what a save by Pashevitz. Vermeulen rims this one around. Graham takes it off the near side boards. He's into the neutral zone with it. Chipping ahead to Krupp, two on one with Bonarenko. Krupp right circle, back in, score! Jay Krupp, what a move! Fake the shot, Chris Pollen got frozen, and the River Dragons lead, one nothing, 7-17 to go in the first. Yep. And now the Prowlers will come out with it. Stoya through the middle, up to Graham right wing side. Graham tried to deke a little too much. Both Howie and Krupp sandwiched him in the circle. Look out, Vermeulen turned it over behind the net, and now taking it away is Pawlowski on a centering feed. Palowski into the neutral zone. He'll dump this one in with about four and a half left to go here in the first. Paulin, look out. He hit Palowski with it behind the net. All alone. Heron, save. Heron, score. Rebound, Chad. Heron waiting for it. Two nothing River Dragons here in the first. Leaks it out all the way into the port here on end. Not enough for icing, though, as Stoya has it at the hash marks. Oh, what a stretch pass to Zulkanich. All alone, Zulkanich. What a save by Pashevitz. Zulkanich is celebrating like he scored. That's not in. Oh my goodness, Pashevitz, what a save. Jay, right wing side, gets around Evans, fires, blocker save, rebound still there. River Dragons trying to clear the danger. Giuliano puts it into the corner. Now up to the right point, D to D pass. Dalton Young, left point, fires, he scores. I'm kind of bummed there's no Graham versus Graham. Here's Peshtuka, he knocks away a neutral zone pass. Oh, look out, he gets around a man. Peshtuka to the middle, what a deke, backhand off the post. Back to the first 50 minutes of that period. First 50 minutes, how about the first? 19 minutes of that first period. Farton in right point, fires a shot. Graham the deflection save made. A little Graham on Graham action there in the slot. Robertson, now for Matt Graham, side of the net, putting it across. Levier, what a save, Pashevitz! Levier looking for some space. 40 seconds gone here in the Houston Clinic penalty kill. Pass to the back door, bottom of the circles, now across. Oh, and they score. Portillo just had that one bounce off him in the right way, and it jumped over his stick in the slot. Left wing side from behind the net. San Apollo getting it back to Trumbley. Couldn't find it on the half wall. Look out, two on one the other way. Dalton Jay, right wing side. Evans bearing down. Pass across, left circle. Now the high slot, so can it, they score. Here's MJ Graham in his own zone, passing it across for San Apollo at the red line, sending it in. Bonarenko, right circle. Bonarenko across. Crew, high slot, fires, glove save, rebound, Graham, score! MJ Graham finding the rebound and just getting it over the line. Power play goal, we're tied 3 3. Deeks it around Robertson to Krupp in the corner. Back to the left point. Howie fires a shot. Glove save. Rebound Bonarenko. Tipped up into the air. Graham to Krupp. Score! Jay Krupp, his second of the night, and another power play tally. 4-3 Columbus. Back and forth we go in this one. Ozelinch back in his own zone with this one to Peshtuka. Now ahead, Bonarenko. What a hit. Laid on there by Dalton Young. Pucks into the zone. Krupp to the middle off of MJ Graham's feet. Couldn't do anything with it. Now he got to fight in the middle. Ozelinch going with Dalton Young. He's got the jersey over Young's head, and Ozilich will take him to the ice. And the Port Huron Prowlers will get a fresh penalty kill unit. Columbus will respond. Yep, 30 seconds. Look oh, out, oh my turnover. gosh, Matt Robertson. What a save, Pashevitz! All alone, it was basically a 2-1-0. Reaching back, Ryland Pashevitz. He puts his name in for a save of the year candidate.
through the neutral zone. Bonarenko intercepts the neutral zone. MJ Graham hustles on side. Bonarenko, great deke, left circle, pulls it back, fires. What a save, Pollen. Rebound, his defense bailed him out. Home run pass. Krupp kicked it, but Graham was able to get it. Graham dropped for Levier. Krupp off the boards into the neutral zone, and the River Dragons are going to win the first of four. What an amazing game. Now let's take a look at Saturday's game. The middle side of the net sticked away by Rutledge. Levier from behind the net to Graham, right circle, checking it's Robertson. Levier now with it, right circle. He cuts to the slot, tries to fire a shot, blocked by Bonarenko. Robertson across, hash marks, Levier scores. Beautiful backdoor play, 18.7 left to go in the first. It's 2-1 Port Huron. Back in the point, couldn't take the pass. Uh -huh. Evans a shot, not in his wheelhouse, fell down trying to slap it in. Now Fallis falls to the ice, Federley left wing to Jay, backhand, they score. Too many River Dragons falling down in different spots, and Port Huron in transition makes it 3-1. Columbus needs to kill off all of this. Face off to the left of Rutledge, Pulowski v. Graham on it. One to the near wall, wing support gives it to Port Huron. Robertson, D to D across to Arnott. Robertson unloads and he scores. Top right corner, Robertson not gonna miss there. 4-1. And out of the box comes Wyatt Trumbly. There's still a minute 53 of power play for Port Huron after that. Face off. You, you, you can't out deke a chest. Face off coming to the left of Rutledge. So Kanich and Pulowski in this one. Pulowski slaps it to the far wall. Hayes will be first on it. He'll dump it down 200 feet. Tried to hit linesman. Missed. Well, inadvertently. Inadvertently missed her. <laughs> Young. Oh, there it is. Oh, Pulowski a chance. Backhand save made. Oh my goodness, how did Poland get back? Out of the penalty boxes, ahead for Bonaranko. gets a step around a man, Bonaranko right circle, pass to the middle, loose there, Philbin trying to battle and Poland jumps on it, covers it up with the blocker, he lost the stick on the collision. Stuka, D to D off the wall, not in the right angle for Vermeulen, now two on one the other way, Levier with Vermeulen chasing back, Pestuka slid, able to block away the pass, what a save Rutledge, as the third man in Federley was denied, put it up on a tee. Body check. Graham through the legs, Krupp to Howie, center point, fires, blocked, rebound, SCORE! That one bounced weird on the ice and Jake Howie's got a goal! 12.47 left to go in the third, it's 4-2. Howie first there, turned it over to Robertson behind the cage, to Arnott, fires, shoulder save, Rutledge coming out on top of his crease to make himself look big. Now Vermeulen sending it ahead, MJ Graham had a knock off his feet, back the other way comes Robertson, three on two as he gets the line, Vermeulen pokes it away, but Stoya able to recover, Bonarenko stole it away, MJ Graham open look, he scores! MJ Graham, what a beautiful move inside out around Paulin, and we've got a game on our hands, 4-3, 6-10 to go in the third. Trying to send it out, Trumbly holds in left point to the middle, Bonarenko across, Krupp waits, oh he had a double clutch on it, it fell off his stick. This one dumped down the length of the ice for the empty net, it misses, Trumbly hustles and he gets the icing call. Oops, lined up far wide out right, he's ready to go. Bonarenko tried to slap it to him, it goes to the opposite side, Pace will play it off, that'll do it. A lot of fun heading up north, taking on the Port Huron Prowlers, and we'll be right back up there this weekend. A little bit of a weird scheduling quirk. We're in the middle of a four-game set, all of them straight with Port Huron. Friday, Saturday last weekend, and Friday, Saturday coming up this weekend. We'll talk more about the Port Huron Prowlers later on in the show, but first we got to get to a break, and on the other side of that break, we'll hear from your captain. That's right, River Dragons number 14, wearing the C on his chest, Chase Fallen. Will be joining us on this set next as River Dragons Weekly rolls on. Don't go anywhere. Francis Marion, better known as the Swamp Fox, a guy known for his guile, his unorthodox methods, the first militia man. He was crafty before craft even existed. F. Marion Continental Whiskey has its own crafty and cunning instincts, a spirit that's bold but smooth. This is a premium, small batch American whiskey that punches well above its weight. Enjoy Swamp Fox F. Marion Continental Whiskey at all River Dragon home games. Butterfly shrimp. Make me feel like a real New Yorker. Hey, I'm eating here. <laughs> New York strip and butterfly shrimp. Golden Corral. The only one for everyone. everyone. 
Georgia Power, we believe our lake should be filled with water, not trash. That a healthy honeybee population will pollinate a healthier environment. That building homes is just as important as powering them. That's why we believe what we do off the grid is just as important as the clean, safe, reliable, affordable energy we provide on it. And that's a different kind of energy. Let's Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security, no worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. There's a lot to love about fall, like the cool weather, watching the game, or streaming your favorite movies with fast and reliable internet and Wi-Fi. Fall is the perfect time to make the change to Beam with no data caps, all your favorite channels, and fast speeds. Call or visit us online at ctvbeam.com to get the perfect package for your needs and make your fall even better. Welcome back into River Dragons Weekly. On this week's show, we're honored to be joined by the team captain from the River Dragons number 14. That's Chase Fallis. Chase, thanks for taking the time. Thank you for having me. So, Chase, you're a kid from Alberta, a city called Calgary. They have an NHL team there, the Flames, so a few hockey fans probably know it. And you were all around that region. Now, all of a sudden, as a professional, you're playing in the southeast United States. How did that happen? Yeah. Uh I, was, uh, I went to school in uh, Edmonton, up in Alberta, for four and a half years. And uh, when I graduated, I needed a place to play and uh, ended up going to Carolina. So I played there for a year and a half. And then uh, with the expansion draft, with the new teams coming into the league, uh, Columbus took me in the draft, so my rights ended up here. And uh, I was excited to come down here. I knew the, I knew the ownership group and uh, yeah, I, I knew uh, I knew Columbus was a great hockey city and they were excited to get hockey back, so I knew it was a, a good fit for me to come down here. So you've gotten used to life here in the South. What's better, life in the South, life up back North in Canada, or does it depend on what month of the year it is? Uh, I mean, I, I honestly do miss the snow a little bit. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the heat, uh, but it is nice to be down South and yeah, not have to shovel your sidewalk every morning. or something like that. I believe it. Well, Columbus, as we have seen in these early weeks in the season, is definitely a hockey-hungry community. Uh, during the opening weekend, about 6,500, 6,600 fans came in through the door to see you guys, and it, it was a lot of fun, a lot of raucous crowds. Talk about playing in front of those crowds and, and what it meant for you uh, to just see hockey be reborn in a city. Yeah, uh, just th uh, throw being being in the city, I could tell people were excited. and. Uh, it's uh, the support we've gotten so far is is great. Uh, it it can only go up from here, I think. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great hockey community, and we're we're excited to be down here. In that opening weekend, uh, we played the Elmira Enforcers, and Elmira has a guy who's been a legend in this league, Ahmad Mafuz, and you have a bit of a rivalry with him, and uh, we saw that kind of spill over a little bit. You and him, I don't know if you had a shoving match per se, but you had a stare down. Uh, what was that like out on the ice? Yeah, uh, definitely there's a rivalry there. We played him a lot last year when I was in Carolina. Uh, he, was, he was just upset at me for going in and grabbing one of their guys. So he was, he was being protective of his guy, which I understand. But uh, we, we play him a few more times this year, and it definitely could get interesting. He's, like you said, he is a legend in this league. So, I mean, just try to get him off his game. What's it like to be out there on the ice when it seems like all this chaos and craziness <clears throat> is happening and, you know, everyone's picking a dance partner and, you know, you might not go always with the guy, but it, it, it's just, it seems like it's a melee out there. What's it like for you as a player out there on the ice? I personally enjoy it. Uh, I'm one of those guys who likes to play physical or get under people's skin. So if I can, if I can do that with a guy like Mafus, then I feel like I'm doing my job. We're here with River Dragons captain Chase Fallis on River Dragons Weekly. You said yourself you're a very physical player, and fans, I think, are seeing that. You've endeared yourself to a lot of fans in this area with your physical play. You're not afraid to block a shot or give a hit. Have you always been that way, or have you been any, any, any time in your career a skill guy? <laughs> uh, definitely not been a huge skill guy. Uh, kind of always just hard, hard-working player. 
uh, do the little things, go into the dirty areas, whether yeah, it's making a hit or blocking a shot, you know, just trying to do anything to help the team win. Well, I tell you, fans of this community, they really seem to like a hardworking captain like yourself, a guy who's not afraid to get physical. And let me ask you, what does it mean to be a captain of a pro team like this? Because I know when you were in Carolina, you were an alternate, but now here you're wearing the C. It's not your first time wearing the C in your hockey career either, uh, but what does it mean to you to be the captain of your pro team? Uh, it's an honor and it's, uh, it's special, uh, especially with it being a, a pro team and a uh, a first year team in the league, uh, just trying to represent the team well on and off the ice. The previous time you were a captain, and I'm going to butcher this, you were yelling at me earlier about it, it's Okotoks, right? Yeah, yeah. Okotoks, so, Alberta. Okotoks, yeah. Alberta. So you were you were the captain there for one, two seasons? Two seasons. For two seasons, and you won a lot yeah. in there. The HGHL, you won a couple. So how does being the captain of your junior team in Okotoks Right? Yeah. Okotoks. O- o- there Tokes, we go. You got it. How does being the captain in Okotoks compare to being the captain in Columbus, even though it's only been a short time right now? Uh, it's it's different here. Everyone is like grown ups, you know. Uh, back in junior, there's still some younger kids, uh, and uh, definitely the different style of play and stuff like that. But like I said, I just try not to change how I play or anything like that, you know, whether it's being a captain or not. Just go out there and work hard and do my job. For Columbus, fans know as they look at the league footprint, we have a long way to go to a lot of our road games. We're we're sort of a sore thumb as you were in the league, and I know you know coming from Carolina, you know that that drive isn't even you know a short drive. But we were in Port Huron last weekend. We got to go back to Port Huron this weekend. So the bus drives are long, but you seem to like playing in Port Huron. I remember last season uh, you had a hat trick in that building. So what what is it like? You like playing in Port Huron because we got we got them coming up again. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, last year uh, first uh, professional hat trick. Uh, must have been just a good game for me. I don't know. I I think uh, whatever rank it, that we go into, I just try to have a good game, uh, I guess. Maybe there's something special in Port Huron. Maybe it's because it's close to Canada. Who knows? <laughs> that might be it. So hear that, kids? Even if you don't register yourself as a skill guy, you can still pick up Patrick. So it maybe depends uh, on what barn you go to. Uh, Chase, before we wrap up this segment, uh, I know we're still early in the season and there's a lot of hockey left to play, but what are some of your thoughts on how the team is coming together, what they look like on the ice, and, and what the cohesion's been in the locker room? Because when you're an expansion franchise like Columbus, is you have a lot of guys who come from all different walks of life all different teams last year you know there's maybe two or three guys who have played with each other in different pockets but for the most part it's all brand new so how's it coming together for you guys uh it's coming together well uh the guys are starting to gel really well uh when you're with with the same guys almost every day you kind of get to know each guy and uh yeah we're we're all excited to be here uh yeah. <laughs> Cut that part out. Yeah, that's okay. We'll work on that. Well, yeah. I tell you, Chase, it's been a lot of fun to watch you guys this year, and there's still so many different games to have on. I mean, we're only in November. Uh, we're going to play all the way till April, so fans have a lot of chance, a lot of chances to see you, uh, and I know they appreciated being able to meet you here on River Dragons Weekly. So thank you so much for your oh, time. Thank you for having me. All right, and when we come back on River Dragons Weekly, we'll look ahead to Port Huron again after we just played up there last weekend. We got to go right back to McMoran Arena. So stick around, more high, stick around, more of the preview coming up after this on River Dragons Weekly. There's a lot to love about fall, like the cool weather, watching the game, or streaming your favorite movies with fast and reliable internet and Wi-Fi. Fall is the perfect time to make the change to Beam with no data caps, all your favorite channels, and fast speeds. Call or visit us online at ctvbeam.com to get the perfect package for your needs and make your fall even better. The best damn spirits in the world. We say that because we care about what we do. The premium quality of our spirits doesn't come from some secret recipe or magic water. 
It comes from our desire to craft the best damn spirits in the world. Swamp Fox Distilling Company. Premium, small batch spirits, made with pride in Buena Vista, Georgia. Now available at your favorite local package store. Let Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security, no worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. Corrals, carved New York strip and jumbo butterfly shrimp. Make me feel like a real New Yorker. Hey, I'm eating here. <laughs> New York strip and butterfly shrimp. Golden Corral, the only one for everyone. Let's Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security, no worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. Welcome back into River Dragons Weekly. Our big thanks to the River Dragons captain, Chase Fallis, number 14. Hope fans enjoy the interview segments we've got on this show week to week. You'll be learning a lot about all the different players that we have on this team. They come from all different walks of life, all different parts of the world. And as you, as the season rolls on, as you continue to watch right here on River Dragons Weekly, you'll hear from all sorts of different colorful characters that make up your Columbus River Dragons. As we look ahead to week four of the FPHL season, once again, the River Dragons are taking on those Port Huron Prowlers. You saw the highlights from Friday and Saturday earlier on in the show. You have to imagine more of the same maybe, or will we get even more animosity? Will we get more fisticuffs? Will we get more goals? Who knows, it's going to be a lot of fun. Remember, you can catch every single game home and away on the radio on 92.1 FM and 1420 AM. And now it's time to take a look around the FPHL and see what happened this week. The Elmira Enforcers had an absolute battle with the Delaware Thunder on Friday. After Elmira was up 4-0, Delaware battled back within one goal, but Elmira ended up taking the win on Friday 5-4. Already mentioned the highlights we saw from the River Dragons win on the road 4-3. to three. The Danbury Hattricks spoiled a banner-raising ceremony up in Winston-Salem. They got the win 3-2 to two, thanks to a mid-to-late third-period goal scored in the difference there. The Menor Icebreakers continue their winning ways against the Battle Creek Rumblebees. That game was in Battle Creek, which is in southwestern Michigan. Menor wins 5-3, and Watertown defeated the Danville Dashers 3-2 on that Friday night. For the River Dragons, it was a perfect Friday, as you were, with the River Dragons winning, Port Huron losing, then Carolina, Battle Creek, and Danville all losing in regulation. It meant that the River Dragons were the only team in the Western Division to gain three points. Everybody else gained zero, so a great look for the River Dragons heading into Saturday's game. However, that Saturday game did not go their way. You saw the two-goal comeback late, but it was just a too little too late as Port Huron won that one 4-3 to three to split the points. Carolina would end up splitting the points with Danbury after an offensive showcase 6-5 to five on Saturday night. The Thunderbirds gained retribution over the Hattricks. Meta Icebreakers, they really put the screws to Battle Creek 10-3 to three in front of their home crowd. They put on an absolute clinic, 15 goals on the weekend. The Meta Icebreakers look like a very strong team out in the Eastern Division. Elmira swept the Delaware Thunder with a 7-3 win on Saturday night, and Watertown swept Danville on the road. Wolves doing a great job over there in Illinois. They win 5-3 over the Dashers. Looking ahead to this weekend's games, well, we've got our first Sunday games coming up this weekend, and a couple of teams have 3-3 three three slates. Let's get right into them. Elmira is taking on Danbury at the Danbury Ice Arena in Connecticut Friday and Saturday. The Menor Icebreakers and Delaware Thunder do battle in a home-and-home. -home. Friday's game is in Harrington, Delaware. Saturday's game is in Menor, Ohio. Thunder will have to be ready 
to play in a very tough barn in Menor after the Icebreakers put up 10 on the Rumblebees. As we know, Columbus will be back up in Port Huron. Second straight weekend that that will happen. Columbus will be looking to take more than three points this time in their trips to McMorrin. The Carolina Thunderbirds host the Danville Dashers for two Friday and Saturday, but then Danville will head to Mentor after that Friday-Saturday slate and have a Sunday game. So we see that Danville and Mentor both have three and threes. For Mentor, they have two of those three at home. Danville has all three on the road and has to travel between Saturday and Sunday. The Watertown Wolves and Battle Creek Rebel Peas will also play a three and three. All three games will be at the rink, Battle Creek, Friday 735, Saturday 735, and Sunday 1235 puck drops there between the Wolves and the Bees. That's how the league looks through six games uh, across for everybody, three weekends, two week two games a weekend. That'll change as we get deeper out of the season. Some teams are going to have to play three and threes. Some teams are going to have some strange setups in the schedule, but right now everything's been pretty even, pretty nice and easy to follow. Speaking of easy to follow and kind of weird scheduling stuff, we already mentioned the back-to-back -back weekends against Port Huron. Well, now guess what? The River Dragons are going to have their first home and home of the season after this Port Huron weekend when they take on the Carolina Thunderbirds, the southern rivalry that the Federal Pro Prospects Hockey League has set up. Uh, will be starting up on November 22nd and 23rd. On the 22nd, that Friday night, we're back home here in the Columbus Civic Center. So make sure you get your tickets at the Columbus Civic Center box office or by searching for the Columbus River Dragons on Ticketmaster. After that Friday game, we make our first trip up to Winston-Salem and the Fairgrounds Annex, taking on those Thunderbirds, the defending Commissioner's Cup champions from last season. It's been a tricky start with a lot of road games, a lot of strong opponents for Columbus early on, but you can tell this is a team that battles, this is a team that scraps, they're a lot of fun to watch, and they're going to pile up some points as the season continues to roll on and make this area proud that hockey is back in West Georgia. That'll do it for this edition of River Dragons Weekly. My big thanks to Chase Fallis, who joined us on the show today, River Dragons captain. Of course, big thanks to all the fine folks here behind the scenes at CTV for letting us use the studio space and making the TV magic happen. And as well, a big thanks to the Columbus River Dragons ownership and front office for helping us get this show on the air and making it viable to bring to you the great fans of Columbus. I'm Zach DeBozart, the voice of the River Dragons. Remember to catch me live from Port Huron Friday and Saturday night at McMoran Arena Arena as the River Dragons and Prowlers play games three and four of this back-to-back -back weekend series. Back-to-back -back games and back-to-back -back weekends. Until then, we'll see you next time on River Dragons Weekly.